Today we're going to go over the various water pollutants that we find and the tests that we use to determine water pollution and other water quality factors. And uh, we will then discuss some stream study information. So the first thing that you're going to fill in, let me get to the next slide, is about sediment pollution. So you need to fill in sources and other information, and you may pause this video as you need to, um, to copy down the information. So you can see from the picture up here that we have land, and this is a river. You can kind of see this line. That indicates a river, and the river is bringing sediments into the ocean. And you can see that by this lighter color. So um, sediment pollution can come from uh, logging, deforestation. Uh, when you cut down trees, the roots can't hold the soil as much. Um, also, when they log or deforest, they get rid of other plants that hold the soil in place. And so the soils, which contain sediments, can flow down into rivers, into the ocean. Mining loosens dirt. Plowing fields for agriculture loosens dirt. Um, soil, sorry. And uh, so those are our main sources of sediment pollution. So sediments can block the light in the water. So this harms your producers. Um, they can't photosynthesize, and so it will lower the amount of productivity, um, the amount of producers to be the bottom of the food web, so you're going to have less species overall. It can harm visual predators. They can't see their prey because of all of the sediments, the muddy water, you can call it. Um, <clears throat> benthic means bottom, and so the sediments, as they settle, can cover or disrupt the food sources of your benthic organisms. The next type of pollution is nutrient pollution and so this kind of comes up through different units. Um, nutrient pollution came up in um, when we talked about biogeochemical cycles earlier this year um, with nitrogen and phosphorus and so the source of nitrogen and phosphorus, and we call that nutrient pollution, can be from a variety of sources. It can be fertilizer runoff um, from farms or even from um, towns. So if you have a city where everybody is putting um, lawn fertilizer and then the rain comes and washes that into storm drains and then out to a river or ocean, it can even be from thousands, hundreds of thousands, or millions of homes with their lawn fertilizer, but that's not, oops, let me go back, that's not a huge source, so mostly it's fertilizer from farms. Um, sewage spills, so human sewage contains nitrogen and a lot of phosphorus, and so that can cause eutrophication. You can have dead animals or plants in the water. That can be a natural thing. A disease could go through animals in the wild or farm animals. Um, one big example is um, a back about 20 years ago, there was a hurricane in North Carolina, Hurricane Floyd, and the floodwaters from that hurricane actually flooded pig farms and killed millions of pigs. And so on the news, we saw helicopter footage of um, floating dead pigs, all, I mean, millions of them in all of the flood water and so all of that has to be decomposed, and when things decompose, they have nitrogen and phosphorus. This can also happen in places where you have a lot of deciduous trees where the leaves fall off. They fall off into lakes or rivers or get washed into streams or any bodies of surface water. They'll be decomposed and provide nutrients when they're decomposed. So fertilizer and sewage runoff and uh, feed lots, so animal manure runoff, also um, actually add that nutrient pollution. I forgot to put on here, but it's also from um, feed lot or animal manure runoff. So it causes eutrophication, toxic algal blooms. Um, you've learned that eutrophication leads to dead zones in the oceans or even in lakes. But um, sometimes you can get something separate. So in the ocean, sometimes there are species of plankton called foraminifera. They are producers and they use 
nitrogen and phosphorus. And when you have a bunch that washes into the ocean, they rapidly reproduce, and then they have enough to create um, a toxic amount of their toxin. So they are actually colored red, and nor they're always out there. So when I go to the ocean in California, um, I can see, I'm sorry, I can't see them because there's not as many, they're microscopic. But when they have enough nutrients, they will make huge amounts of copies of themselves. And they're in millions and billions and trillions that you can actually, they clump together and you can see them and they're red in color. So that's what we call a red tide. It has nothing to do with a tide, but um, it turns the water red. Now, it also creates a toxin. They naturally secrete a toxin, which normally is fine. But in huge amounts, they, that toxin be, can become deadly. So most of the time they have warnings when there's a red tide for people who collect clams or other shellfish, scallops from the ocean, and also from fish. So what happens is that the toxin gets absorbed by um, as, as the filter feeders in the ocean, like your... Um, a lot of plankton or um, small small invertebrates to your shell, your um, clams, scallops, mussels, they'll, um, they filter the water through their body and, and capture um, food that way, plankton that way, and um, they can also pick up the toxins which get concentrated through bioaccumulation in their body and then other species as well. So they warn at the time we have these big blooms, don't eat um, things that you catch. Certain species actually mostly concentrate them. There's another species that produces a different type of toxin called domoic acid, and marine mammals that eat fish or other marine organisms, they get that concentrated in their bodies and it can eat away their brain actually and cause seizures. The next type is a toxic chemical. So different industries can discharge this illegally into water. There's um, several movies, Aaron Brockovich was made about this, Civil Action was made about this. Um, sometimes people get um, a, a permit to do it and so it's legally with a permit. So we have the Clean Water Act that forbids discharging into a body of water without a permit. So you can still do it with a permit, but not without. So it can be illegally or legally. Permits cost money, so a lot of industries will do illegal uh, dumping into water because it's the cheapest way to get rid of their toxic waste. Um, so you can, uh, depending on the toxic chemical, it will cause human health damage, wildlife death. Um, it, again, it depends. There's all sorts of things from arsenic with uh, gold mine, sorry, cyanide with gold mining to um, DDT uh, to PCBs. So in other chapters and other topics, you will learn about specific chemicals and what they specifically do. The next type is thermal pollution. And so that's when water warms up. Thermal means getting warmer. So power plants um, cool, as you've learned, they cool their um, turbines with, well, I'm sorry, um, factories can use water to cool their machines, but power plants use water to heat up and spin turbines, which creates electricity, and then they have to let that water cool down or they discharge it back into bodies of water. <clears throat> and um, also, if you deforest, you've removed shade. So if there happened, now I didn't have a picture of this, but if there was a stream running through here, that stream no longer has shade, and so it's going to warm up. So um, it's a physical property of water that warmer water lowers dissolved, or can hold less dissolved oxygen. And so uh, it's opposite of what kids think. So higher temperatures, less dissolved oxygen. Also, warmer waters can be out of a species range of tolerance. So species are adapted to a certain um, temperature of water, and so the species can die, but most of the time, if they can, they'll, they'll swim to a different area 
but some of them will die. They can't tolerate it if they can't get away from the thermal pollution. All right, the next one is pathogens in the drinking water. Here's a little diagram of how it can happen. Um, you know, in a developing country that doesn't necessarily have sewer lines. Um, so this is an outhouse, but in some places they could have a toilet inside, but that sewer line um, is not necessarily going to a wastewater treatment plant. It could be going directly out to the ocean or directly out to a river, even from a toilet in a house. Not in the United States um, for places that... Um, I'm sure in the United States this could still happen. People live in rural areas, but most people who live in rural areas have a septic tank for their toilets, their sewage, and they um, keep that way far away from their well water. Um, but in the United States, sometimes we have untreated sewage. For example, when we have a huge El Nino rainstorm, it can overflow the wastewater treatment plant. So they have to do an emergency discharge into the ocean or it will cause millions and billions of dollars of damage. So sometimes they have to do an emergency sewage discharge into the ocean. Um, usually that's either a mile out or five miles out um, in pipes, depending on what they can do and what city it is and where it is. Um, in some locations, there is untreated sewage, just that they don't take care of. For example, there is a beach in Malibu, California, that's kind of hard to get to, um, but up on the cliffs are million dollar homes and people who live there, they don't want people to get to their beach because it's kind of their, it's not a private beach. There are no private beaches legally in, in the United States, but it's hard to get to. So they think of it as their community little private beach. And I've been there because again, I just walked there. Whoops, sorry, let me go back. But I found out, um, um, from somebody who knows that they have sewage lines that drip down the cliff into the ocean. So their little private beach actually has some untreated sewage in it. The health department can't figure out where it comes from. So they, um, if they did figure it out, they would make that stop, but they haven't been able to trace the source of it. So anyway, sewage, feedlots where you have lots of cattle together in their manure, Dog poop runoff from lawns that go down storm drains into rivers can have harmful bacteria like E. coli. They can contain viruses. They can contain protozoa. Um, so our wastewater treatment plants kills all that stuff. But if you drink untreated water, you can be infected and you can die um, or get very sick. That's why when you go camping, you don't drink from streams before you can boil it when you camp or backpack. You can either bring your water or you can get it from a, a stream, but you need to filter it. You need to boil it or um, you can use a solar heater and get it up to a certain degree to make it safe to drink. Okay, then we have heavy metal pollution. And so the sources um, can be mining, burning fossil fuels. Here's a mine that has leaked out um, toxic metals and other toxic chemicals. <clears throat> so the metals in particular, so you have toxic chemicals and some of those toxic chemicals are heavy metals. Um, so it can cause death, but before that it causes brain and organ dam damage. The two famous ones that we talk about are lead and mercury. And um, there's also other ones like cadmium. Um, so there's other heavy metals that cause problems. Here's a, a specific detail you need to know about mercury, that in aquatic environments, it can turn into toxic methylmercury because bacteria uh, transform it. So not only does it cause brain and organ damage, it can be toxic to aquatic life. And then the last one for pollutants is litter. So it's trash, right? So um, sometimes some parts of the world, they have nowhere to put it, so they just dump it in the ocean, but that's not common. Um, for in, in the United States, we'll have this trash in the ocean after a big rain um, or a lake or, or a river because trash that's in the street, rains wash it into storm drains, which lead to rivers, 
and into the ocean. So they say that actually the most dangerous time to go swimming or surfing in the ocean is actually after a rain because rainwater washes lots of stuff into the ocean. They can wash fertilizers from lawns, dog poops from lawns, trash, all kinds of nasty things into storm drains, into rivers, into oceans. So microplastics is another thing. So microplastics are teeny tiny bits of plastic that come from either degrading, you know, plastic bags that you get at the grocery store, to things like facial scrubs that have microplastics. Also, another source of microplastics lately is washing of our synthetic clothes. So most of our clothes are not cotton. If they're cotton, they also have a little spandex mixed in to make them fit nicer and, and fall nicer, and that's a synthetic from petroleum. And so every time we wash our clothes, tiny bits of the clothing fiber go to the wastewater treatment plant. And the wastewater treatment plants are not designed to filter out microplastics, unfortunately. So over time, they can be cause endocrine disruption. The big stuff chokes wildlife, strangles wildlife. The, the microplastics can be endocrine disruptors and cause reproductive abnormalities. So in the next video, we will go over different water quality tests.